Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to the Geek Suite. I'm your host, the one and only Kidner Bean, and today we're filming in beautiful Honolulu because I'm traveling and it's really bright, so I'm going to go ahead and put these on. All right. And for weekly, or just about, weekly geeky content, be sure to hit like and subscribe, ring that notification bell, and support our channel on Patreon. The link will be in the description section down below. All right, guys. I wanted to film this whole thing on the balcony, but it is being uncommonly noisy today with all these city sounds, so I'm going to go ahead and move inside, and I'll see you guys in a minute. But first, I just want to show everybody the beautiful views from the balcony at my hotel where I'm staying in beautiful Hawaii. There's the ocean. Hello again, my lovelies. Welcome back to the Geek Suite. Uh, we took a little tour of my balcony and then realized it was way too loud to film out there, so now we're back inside, but at least now I can see all of you. So as I've noted, today I am in Hawaii for a STEM conference because yes, I'm one of those kinds of nerds. And I figured that while we're here, this would be a perfect time to do a Lilo and Stitch cartoon conspiracy video. But wait, you say, why are you covering Lilo and Stitch? That's one of the best and most wholesome Disney videos ever. It's got a memorable plot and real down-to-earth characters. It covers dark and heavy content like losing your parents in the foster care system without becoming overly so. What possible critiques could you have? It's even got beautiful 2D watercolor backgrounds. How could you possibly have any critiques? Yes, yes, and yes to all of those things. That's a good question, and we're going to cover that later in this video. And, not unlike other cartoon conspiracies we've covered, this is one of my favorite videos that I grew up watching as a kid. And it's because I spent so much time watching this film that I was able to see something that maybe other people didn't, and I definitely think we should look deeper into it. So today's cartoon conspiracy revolving around Lilo and Stitch is about Pudge the Fish and how he was framed for Lilo's parents' murder. So looking at this popular theory about why people blame Pudge for the death of Lilo's parents, let's go ahead and look at the Lilo and Stitch wiki and see what it says. Since Lilo's parents died in a car accident where rain made the road more treacherous, it is possible the reason she wants to appease Pudge by feeding him peanut butter sandwiches and cleaning his grove for him is because she believes he controls the weather and that if she continues to treat him in such a manner, a similar accident to the one that killed her parents won't happen again. Now, this theory is more of a geeky, playful, hyperfixating on one thing that she says, and it's not really meant to be taken super seriously, but it is something that I then looked at when watching the film again as an adult. Because while this is supposed to be lighthearted and playful, there are some serious implications to this theory that followers of this theory believe, that Lilo believes, on some level, that Pudge is a deity who controls the weather, and that he is responsible for the accident that killed her parents. So we're accepting that there are these deities on the Hawaiian Islands that take the form of normal everyday animals. And I've got to kind of agree, Pudge is definitely some sort of deity, because if you look at that peanut butter sandwich in the beginning of the movie, that is an underwater sandwich, not in a Ziploc bag, and the bread isn't disintegrating, the peanut butter's not going anywhere, and while, yes, I am aware that that would just be hard to animate, it does support the fact that Pudge is somehow enchanting this peanut butter sandwich so that way he can eat and enjoy it. And furthermore, how else would this information be conveyed to Lilo that he only likes peanut butter sandwiches? So there's definitely some weird supernatural stuff going on with the fish. And also, just a quick sidebar, why is only Lilo in trouble for fighting in the beginning of the movie? Because if you watch this exchange between her and Myrtle, Myrtle is a huge biatch. She's making fun of an orphan and pushes Lilo to the edge. Lilo, who's very clearly feeling strongly about this and is clearly working through her recent parents' death, because it is conveyed to the audience that all of these changes are fairly recent for her and for Nani. I'm like, the dance teacher uh, doesn't say anything, doesn't reprimand Myrtle on screen, and then we later see in the next scene that he's called Nani, Lilo's sister, to come pick her up and has informed her of the fight. Why doesn't he call Myrtle? That's a straight up psycho. Who makes fun of an, a recent orphan? Like seriously, what up Disney? I personally feel that Lilo was totally justified in her actions. 
Not that violence solves anything, but it was a reasonable response to the kind of pressure and teasing and bullying that she was put under. You can't just treat people like crap and expect them not to snap, folks. You just can't. Okay, okay, back to business. Shake it off, shake it off. All right, so we were talking about uh, Pudge being framed for the death of Lilo's parents and how I found the true culprit by watching the film more closely. Okay, so for the sake of argument, let's assume that Pudge is some sort of local deity or demigod who controls the weather. And it was raining on the night that Lilo's parents crashed. However, if you look at these wonderful diagrams that I've presented on the weather patterns of Hawaii, it rains all the time, especially on the big island, depending on what side of the island you're on. So sometimes, I mean, I've been here for two days and it's already rained three times for like 20 minutes at a time. And when Lilo tells the story, she mentions that it was raining and then they went for a drive. So her parents already knew that it was raining when they decided to go out for a leisurely, you know, Sunday drive. And can we talk about what the economy must have been like when Lilo and Stitch was put out, that people were still just driving for the fun of it? Because right now where I live, gas is over like $4 a gallon, and there's no way that's a fun activity for us. Okay, okay, back to, back to business. So yes, it was raining when she said goodbye to her parents, and they went out for a drive and then ultimately had a fatal car accident. But raining in Hawaii isn't an uncommon event, and people who do drive in that weather and who choose to drive in that weather are more comfortable doing so because they're familiar with the road conditions. So it's unlikely that her parents would have expected to crash, and if they had, they probably would have stayed home. And, more importantly, there's this seemingly innocuous character who keeps appearing during the movie of Lilo and Stitch that does cause car accidents. And it's this guy. This frog appears multiple times in the movie, and every time he does, it's on a highway, and it's usually revolving around an accident or lack thereof, or preventing one. We first see the frog when he meets Stitch after Stitch crash lands on Hawaii. And the frog is there almost to like distract him because Stitch is very clearly like on a mission. Mission. He's taking, you know, awareness of his surroundings, figuring out where he is and what his next move is. And then he stops and notices the frog. And unlike immediately shooting at the frog, like he does everything else, like the leaves, the raindrops, whatever, he stops and starts, you know, talking in his alien language to the frog and making threatening gestures, but doesn't immediately kill him. And this is a clue to the viewers that there's something up with the frog. It has some sort of special significance. Yes, it's cute and adorable, and it's a funny little joke that, you know, reappears throughout the film, but he has to have some sort of supernatural powers in order to cause this change in behavior for Stitch and, you know, survive the instant shooting response. He delays this for him. And in doing this mesmerizing, don't shoot me, just be distracted type trance that the frog has Stitch in, it holds him in this trance just long enough for Stitch to get run over. Now, does holding Stitch's attention and keeping him distracted to the point where he's run over by a big truck immediately mean that this frog is a supernatural deity? No, but it does lay the groundwork of the relationship between this frog and accidents along the highway in Hawaii. And now, the next time we see this frog is when Stitch is kicked off of Gantu's ship and he's trying to save Lilo. Stitch hits the ground hard and is initially unconscious. We then see the frog pop up along the side of the highway, realize that Stitch is in trouble and at risk for being run over, so he jumps on top of Stitch and acts as sort of a guardian of the highway. He prevents Stitch from being run over, and then a few minutes later when Stitch regains consciousness, he uses the frog to stop a truck on the highway and then hijacks the truck and uses it to propel himself back onto Gantu's ship so he can save Lilo. Now, why would the frog do this? Why would it just recognize Stitch and instinctively hop on top of him in a protective stance unless it knew it had some sort of ability to control accidents or lack thereof on the highways of Hawaii? Now, the frog's powers, whether intentional or just written as a joke by the animators, are appear to be limited only to the highways. And this is where we're going to put our groundwork in and our big reveal for hashtag why Pudge was framed. Pudge's abilities also appear limited to the weather and why yes, weather can be a factor in whether or not someone has a car accident, 
we've already established that having an accident due to the weather conditions is very unlikely for people who live in places where that type of weather is common, like in Hawaii or Seattle or London, places where it rains a lot, people learn how to drive in those um, conditions. So when Lilo says it was rainy and they went for a drive, that means they were prepared to drive on those conditions and means that the weather was an unlikely factor in their accident. So that just leaves the roads. And that's where the frog comes in. Because we've seen throughout the course of the film that this frog has the ability to manipulate traffic conditions and cause or prevent the cause of accidents on the highways. So when we, the viewer, and Lilo are looking for someone to lay the blame on or pay homage to a certain deity to prevent future accidents, we really shouldn't be looking at Pudge. Poor Pudge didn't have nothing to do with this. He just wants his peanut butter sandwiches. The real person we need to blame is the frog. And there you have it, the true killer of Lilo's parents revealed. Do I have it? Do I have it? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Alrighty, my lovelies, that's all I have for you today. I gotta get back to my conference. Be sure to hit like and subscribe if you like this video. Ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of our wonderful Geek Suite content. And be sure to support our channel on Patreon if you want to see more videos like this. Every donation really helps keep this channel running. And our patrons get exclusive content, access to early videos, and special uh, features like access to our Discord server. So be sure to check that out. Again, the link for our Patreon is in the description section down below. And once again, my lovelies, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Mwah!